church, can we stand to our feet this morning as we worship our King? Oh, we sing just one word. Just one word. You call the storm that surrounds me. Just one word. The darkness has to be treated. Just one touch. I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch.
Welcome to Riverside, and welcome to those of you joining us online. We're so happy to have you with us here this morning. If you don't know me, my name's Tyler, and uh, I don't actually work here at the church. They just trust me with a microphone every once in a while, and I'm thrilled to be able to welcome you all here this morning. I'm not sure there's anything that brings me more joy than welcoming a group like you all to worship here together on a Sunday morning. If you're new with us, we want you to know that Riverside is one church that meets in two locations, and we exist so that people will come to find and learn to follow Jesus. And so everything we do up here this morning is going to be done with those things in mind. We're going to worship together. We're going to pray together. We're going to open God's word together. We're going to spend time in Christian community this morning. And our hope and our, our prayer is that you will encounter Jesus in very real and very powerful ways here this morning. Would you bow your heads and pray with me over the service as we continue to worship here this morning? Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And we thank you for bringing us all here this morning. Lord, we know that it's not an accident that we're here today. We know that you have orchestrated every single one of us being here in this exact place, in this exact moment this morning. I pray that you would open our hearts to what you have to share with us here today and that you would speak to us through Pastor Donnie. In Jesus' name, amen. You were there before the start, and you were there before the start. The Son of God and set apart, He who was in this and this to come.
Jesus, we need you this morning. And so we looked to you. Lord, would you open our eyes to your word? Would you speak to us personally, Lord? And would you bind us together closer as a family because we came to worship you today? Lord, you are good. And it's in your name that we pray today. Amen. 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 You can go on ahead and find a seat. I have a handful of announcements for you before we hear from Pastor Donnie here in just a minute. Uh, again, I want to welcome you, uh, those of you who are new and visiting Riverside. We're so thrilled that you've decided to join us here this morning. And we want to let you know there's a handful of resources that are available to you as you start to get acclimated here at the church. And two of them are in the, the back of one of the chairs in front of you. The first is a welcome brochure. It's going to tell you a little bit about who we are, what we believe, some of the different ministries here at Riverside. I always say this, it is not a substitute for making a connection with somebody. Please, if you're new and you're visiting here, grab somebody that you see on stage here this morning. We would love to meet you and start to get to know you. The other resource is an info card. And uh, we believe in serving you well by communicating with you well about different things going on here at the church. And we can't do that if we don't have your contact information. So if we don't have your contact information, either because you're new or because it's changed, maybe you consider filling out one of those info cards. You can drop it in one of the offering buckets on your way out, and that could be your offering here this morning. I do want to let you know that we have an app here at Riverside. It's available on Apple and Android devices. It is really the best resource for keeping in touch with things going on here at the church, different events, um, and, and also for following along live during the sermon. The sermon notes are right in there. You can take your own notes right there live in the app. I would encourage you, if you haven't downloaded that, uh, to consider doing that. It's a phenomenal resource. Uh, I'm going to try to do my best Mike, uh, Pastor Mike impression here. If you're new with us and you'd like to be in the know here at Riverside, was that good? We have a new to know session happening after both services here this morning. Uh, walk out these doors right here and just keep walking. There's a big room right in the center of our space. Um, you can meet some of the pastors, some of the leadership here at Riverside, uh, get a much better idea of, uh, in-depth idea of who we are and what we believe, different things that you could get uh, involved in. I also want to let you know, if you are a member here at Riverside, we have our annual business meeting coming up March 19th at 6 p.m. That's going to happen at our Oakmont campus this year. So please, if you are a member, please mark that on your calendar. It's really important that you're there. Um, as somebody that's in the know a little bit, I'll give you a sneak preview and tell you there's some, some important things being discussed at that meeting. So if you are a member, please consider marking that on your calendar. Uh, we would really appreciate you being there. Again, March 19th at 6 p.m. And with that, I will let you either open your notes or your Bible as we prepare to hear from Pastor Donnie. Hey guys, good morning. As uh, Tyler said, my name's Donnie. I'm one of the pastors on staff. I work in the student ministry and I um, hope you're uh, awake enough to participate a little bit here. Um, need some call outs from the crowd. Uh, what do you think of, I need to, and this could be scary. This is why people up here don't do things like this because it could be scary what you get. Um, what do you guys think of when you hear the word cling? Yeah, cling. Cling wrap, you said? <laughs> cling wrap. That's a good one. I didn't think of that one. That didn't come to my mind. I feel like it doesn't work well. That maybe that's why cling, cling wrap doesn't come to my mind. Every time I use it, it doesn't cling the way I feel like it's supposed to cling. Um, that has some connotations for the message this morning. Wasn't even thinking of that. Other idea? What do you think of when you think of cling? I'll start calling. I know a lot of you. I'll just start calling you. Just yell it out. I can't get over it. What's that? 
Children. You mean, yeah, I, d I was thinking of that. One of the things that came to my mind is how little kids, little kids, I mean, bigger kids don't do, <laughs> like it stops at some point very clearly. Some of you guys are in that stage, you're like, my kid doesn't cling to me. They don't want to even touch me. Yeah, little kids will cling to their parent. Yeah, I was thinking of that. Uh, that, that definitely uh, connects with some of the stuff we're going to talk about. Some, someone may, you're going to have to really say it out and I might have to like, huh? Other ideas? Cling? It's got to be some other. What? Static. Who said that? Who said static? Static. Okay. Yes, I also thought of that. The thing that came to my mind, and I don't know, this has never happened to me. I don't know if it's actually happened to someone that's in this room this morning, but like a sock stuck to someone's back. <laughs> it's like a cartoony kind of an idea of static cling. Has that ever happened to anybody in here? Have you ever, ever had a sock stuck to your shirt? It's not happened to anyone here, but that's like, in my mind, that's like static cling. It's like the poster for static cling. Um, that's kind of the end of mine. I'm just, I cling. Any other? Well, there was one other one, but um, any other comes to your mind when you think of the word cling? On. What's that? On. on? Just, on. yeah, cling. Oh, cling on like Star Trek? <laughs> Man, I, you know, I could have, we could have had an awkward back and forth because it take me a while, but I'm there. I'm there. I appreciate that. I will honestly say this. Unless the Holy Spirit really helps me, I don't know that that has anything to do with what we're talking about. I mean, listen, afterwards, maybe you come up to me and be like, look, here's how that connects. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, but that's, man, really stretching me. Okay, Klingon, wow. I think that's a language in Duolingo, isn't it? Can't you learn, learn that language? Uh, the word cling, I wonder, I wonder what, uh, maybe some of you guys who didn't speak, what comes to your mind, but we did hear some things. Cling wrap, child clinging to a parent. Uh, we, we heard some things about clinging, static cling. So with that in mind, with that in mind, the question we're going to talk about this morning is how can we contribute to flourishing marriages? How can we contribute? Now, when I say we, I mean all of us. I mean married, unmarried, young, old, um, all of us. So I hope you don't tune out right now. If you are unmarried, um, there could be a temptation. On a, on a morning when this question is on the screen, you could be like, okay, I'll just tune out. Please don't. Because I think there's something for all of us in the scriptures that we're going to talk about. We have been talking about flourishing relationships. So with that idea of cling in mind, I want to look at some scriptures together, some foundational passages. And the first two I want to look at, first two passages come out of the book of Genesis, Genesis uh, chapters 1 and 2. So let's get into those together. Genesis chapter 1. Let's take a look at verses 26 through 28. How can we, all of us, contribute to flourishing marriages? And I would say, a question I don't have on the screen and didn't even think about asking out loud, but I'm thinking of it right now. Why? Why would we? Why should we? I would really hope that by reading these passages, that question would also just be answered in the reading of these scriptures. But let's look at Genesis 1, 26 through 28 together. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Then the Lord God made <clears throat> a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, 
This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, is joined to his wife. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and shall hold fast to his wife, shall keep to his wife, shall cling to his wife. That's where the word cling comes in. Some of the things that were said earlier fit this better than others. That is why a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife. To be married is to cling. To be married is to cling and become one in a similarly mysterious way as the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. In a mysterious way, just as God is united but three, the man and woman shall be united as one. To be united in a similarly mysterious way as Christ and the church are one. Paul makes a reference to this in Ephesians chapter 5. It's a picture. Marriage is a picture. Our lives are designed to be a picture. Our relationships are designed to be a picture of our creator because he's created us in his image. He's created us to reflect who he is. So to be married is to cling with a purpose. To be married is to cling with purpose, and that purpose comes from God. God made marriage. And he didn't make marriage contrary to maybe what some of us might have believed for a long time, to just be synchronized navel-gazing. That is not why God made marriage, at least according to the Scriptures. Now, if you don't know what navel-gazing is, I don't know, I think it's just a funny term, and I use it probably like in situations where it's like, I don't think that means what you think it means. Sitting around staring at each other is not why God made marriage. There's a mandate in Scripture here. There's purpose in Scripture Marriage is a unique and intimate partnership created by God to steward, to tend to, and to bless what he has made. He's made all of creation, and he created people, and he created marriage to steward that creation, to take care of that creation. There's a mandate to tend to what God has made and to bless what God has made, people included. Marriage is made to be a blessing to the rest of creation. There's a mandate, there's a responsibility, there's a purpose in marriage that relates to fruitfulness. The purpose in marriage, one of the purposes is that God made marriage to be fruitful in every way to produce good things, to nurture good things, to nurture goodness, and to be a place where good things are born and good things flow out of. Again, reflecting God the creator, the giver of all good gifts. I mean, isn't that who God is? The maker of good things, the one who gives us blessing and good things, and out of marriage is supposed to flow good things that bless the world. Marriage has a purpose of reflecting who God is. And this is something to ponder because it is a mystery and it's big. How should marriage and how does marriage, how does the union of a man and a woman in marriage reflect who God is? Well, we've got to look and try to understand who God is. And then we can start to understand how marriage is supposed to reflect who God is. The marriage union has an important function. And within that marriage union, God has made man and woman separately with unique roles, unique responsibilities, unique gifts, unique callings to bring different things to that function. So even within a marriage, just as God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit perform different functions that we observe in Scripture and that we all benefit from, in a marriage, similarly, the man and the woman bring essential gifts and roles and responsibilities 
to be fulfilled in performing the function that God has made us to perform. So to be married is to cling with a purpose. Matthew 19, 4, Jesus says this. Haven't you read, he replied. By the way, it, always, it, it had to just irk the Pharisees when he said stuff like that. He would say, haven't you read this? And you know they're thinking like, yeah, we read this. So he says, haven't you read, he replied, that in the beginning the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So here Jesus lends his authority, his voice, his credibility to this created union by God and for all the reasons that it was made and the function of man and woman within that marriage relationship. Jesus brings his authority and validates that and then adds verse 6 here and says, Let no one separate what God has joined together. And so we can see from Jesus' words here that to be married is to cling for life. To be married is to cling for life, not cling for dear life. (laughs) I mean, sometimes, you know, in marriage, that kind of can be how it is. Um, But that's not God's intention. It's to cling for life is what God's intention is. To stay united to stay a union that will bless the world and steward what God has made, to stay united and to hold fast. To be, to be married is to hold fast. Marriage was created by God as a, as a permanent union of one man and one woman for life. And I'll say this too, and I think the scriptures bear it out, especially I've been thinking about um, the conversation Jesus had with the woman at the well, and that, that living together does not equal marriage, at least according to the scriptures. Living together without that solemnization, um, that promise, that covenant before God is, is not marriage. Marriage requires that promise and that covenant and that commitment before God and his community to be considered marriage. Hebrews 13.4 says that marriage should be honored by all. And the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Marriage should be honored. Marriage uh, marriage should be considered to be precious. That word honored there. Marriage should be considered to be something of great cost, of great value. Marriage, this union that God has made to bless his creation and steward his creation and bless other people. Marriage should be esteemed by all people. Marriage should be respected by all. We all have a role in this. We can all, no matter who we are, we can all help married people cling. We all have a part in it. Kids, I think of this, this well-known scripture commandment to honor your father and mother. Kids, part of honoring your father and mother is honoring their marriage and helping them to cling. As a kid, I can do that as a, as a child? Absolutely, that can be part of how we honor our parents. Unmarried adults, widows, widowers. You can be friends of marriage, supporters of marriage and married couples. I would hope that you would be a friend of clinging, not a clingy friend, (laughs) a friend of clinging. No one wants a clingy friend. Um, I know a lot of times unmarried people, and I've I've heard people say this uh, multiple times, numerous times, that Uh, Unmarried people can feel often like a third wheel. And so uh, the temptation is to avoid being too close to married couples and to being around settings where marriage is kind of like a headline or they feel like marriage is a headline. And, you know, there are two ways to think of that third wheel. I would hope that you'd want to be the third wheel, but you'd kind of want to be the third wheel like the third wheel on a tricycle. I'd hope that you'd want to be a third wheel, kind of like the third wheel 
on a big wheel. You remember those? Yeah. Little plastic. Do they even still make big wheels? Are, do they? You know, I've, it always spins out. That plastic wheel would always spin out. There's not enough traction there. There's some rubber on that thing. Maybe you be the big wheel in that relationship, that marriage relationship. So I would hope that if you're unmarried, if you're single, whatever your situation in life is, I would hope that you would consider yourself someone that could be a blessing to married couples. And I'll say this too, if you, if you are unmarried, we need you. People in, in marriage need godly friends. People outside the marriage to hold them accountable, to just be there for them, to spend time with them, to be a good, godly friend that'll walk through life. And couples need individuals that will support their union through prayer and encouragement and fellowship and time together. So I would hope that if you're unmarried, that you would consider yourself to be a friend of marriage and a friend of married people. And, and I wonder how you could even do that. Um, maybe be praying about that and thinking about that. And I think just even a simple change of, of mind from avoiding married people to saying, hey, you know, maybe I should spend some more time with married people because um, I can be a blessing to them. Maybe a ministry that God can give you to bless people who are married and to bless these marriages. I want to say something else about honoring marriage because I think it's important. Um, I think another way that we can honor marriage is if you're not married, to not do sexual things before you're married is a way to honor marriage. If God has created marriage as this, this sacred place where the two become one, even outside of a marriage, we can honor the sacredness of that institution that God has made by keeping it holy and not participating in sexual things before marriage. And that honors marriage. That fulfills what this scripture, I believe, is saying. In just Genesis 1 and 2, um, if you just read through Genesis 1 and 2, those two chapters, you see these words appearing there. God created. God blessed. God said. God created. God blessed. God said. I think it's easy and it's not wrong. It's, it's rightfully so when we read, especially these days, Genesis 1 and 2. We focus on the man and the woman. We focus on creation. Uh, we look to it to give us a theology of, of creation. We look to it to define the roles of man and woman. We look, look to it to inform us. And those are all good things. But we cannot miss the huge figure looming over all of creation, our God. You know how easy it is for us to miss him? Man, this is on me. This is just on me so heavy this morning. How do we miss him? When we're looking at the scriptures, when we're looking at our lives, when we're looking at our relationships, how do we miss this huge, majestic, loving, and powerful God that stands over and above all of it? How do we miss that? And I think even for the good things, so, so often we miss it. We talk about clinging in marriage, and some might say, well, people who aren't Christian and don't even know God can cling in marriage and, and stay married for their whole lives. You can't skip God in that. We bear his image. It still comes from him. It's still a reflection of him because we're made to be like him. It's his image stamped on our soul that leads to those things. It's literally a picture that should point us to God. Looking at God as the central figure behind all of this, seeing the man and the woman, seeing marriage, seeing creation, we must see God himself. We must see that clinging to him first, clinging to him foremost, is the ultimate and first union that all of us were intended to have. 
there can be no clinging of any kind to anything good, to any, any, any people, no clinging in healthy relationships without this first clinging to the one who gives us purpose, the one who breathed breath into our lungs, the one who stands over and beyond and before all of creation. The encouragement that I think the scriptures give us, that God gives us, that Jesus cries out from the cross to us and says, cling to God. First and foremost, cling to God. There's no hope of clinging in marriage if we aren't first clinging first and foremost to the God who made us. Marriage was God's idea. Families were God's idea. All of this was God's idea, how it works, the blessings that flow out of it, the way we all work together, how marriages fit together in communities and churches, how marriages bless, how unmarried people relate to married people and how it all works together in community. This was all God's idea. And God is the key to unlocking all of the fruit and goodness that flows out of it. He owns marriage. He defines marriage. It's his idea. And understanding marriage and clinging start with him. God is the binding agent in marriage, in every relationship. He is the glue that holds it all together. Our first union is with God through Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that union, that union with God through Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that sustains us to continue to cling in marriage and in godly relationships. That power comes from the Holy Spirit. That union with God defines, it enlightens, it empowers all other unions. Separation from God through sin and selfishness and going our own way, that separation from God has led to wild and massive and long-standing misunderstanding of what marriage is and perversion of what God has made. Jesus died, an ugly death on the cross, not for a few little things, he died for the ugliness of human sin. Jesus died on the cross, a bloody, naked death, not for us just getting it a little wrong. He died because we've gotten it so, so wrong, because we've really messed up and we as humans have destroyed what God has made. And God has loved us so much and wanted reconciliation and restoration and beauty to be restored so much that Jesus came and died to put that union with God back together again so that out of that union, blessing could again flow so that again there could be fruitful marriages, fruitful relationships, a mandate that again blesses the world, that again tends to his creation. That's why Jesus came and died. Man. Personally, I, I, I say this to uh, students all the time, I, I don't often find myself in adult contexts where I say this a lot, but I'll, I'll say this in case it is a benefit or something that you can hear this morning. Given this idea that we are meant to cling to God first and foremost and that he is the binding agent inside of marriage, that holds us together and enlightens and helps us understand everything that marriage is supposed to be. Let me say, it's not a good idea to marry someone who is not clinging to God. It's not a good idea to marry somebody who is not serious about their faith in Christ and not serious about growing in him and pursuing him and understanding who God is. So the thing this morning is cling and help cling. If you're married, cling. And cling in the power of the Holy Spirit with a focus on Jesus, with a united focus on God and his purpose for your marriage. If you're unmarried, help 
the marriages around you in any way you can, to be a friend of marriage, to be a good friend, to pray, to support, and if you're married, this goes without saying, I'll say it, it should go without saying, as a married person, I, this goes without saying in my mind, that out of a marriage, part of the blessing that's supposed to flow out of a marriage is blessing people who are not married of all kinds. We as married couples with homes that uh, are part of, of this whole Christian community, we should be blessing people who are not married in every way that we possibly can. And what would community look like? What would churches look like? What would the world look like if every married couple following Jesus was doing everything they could to bless people who weren't married and every unmarried person was doing everything they could to be a, a minister to and to bless and be a friend to married couples, what would that look like? I think it would look beautiful. And I think that's the church and that's the community that Jesus died to make. And I'll say that the question this, mor this morning to all of us is, and to you is, how will you cling and help cling? How will you cling and help cling? What does that look like for you in your prayer and thinking about this and taking next steps about this and the thing that I have not been able to get over today and in some ways in my mind, this has nothing to do with marriage, but I got up this morning and I just cannot get this off of me. That this whole idea of clinging to God and clinging in marriage we can't cling to God if we do not have a humility before him that recognizes how broken we are and recognizes how sinful we are. It's all just nice songs. It's all just nice religion if we do not realize that we need him, that we have sin. Whether we don't know Jesus for me, who stands up here, I've been serving God for a long time. I'm a called a pastor and I stand here before you and I'm broken. And there's not a day that I don't need to reach out to God and say, forgive me. And so the thing that I've not been able to escape this morning is, a, is literally God just calling us to that place of humility and repentance. I don't think we can get anywhere spiritually. I don't think we can grow spiritually. I don't think we can experience what God really wants us to experience until we are honestly ready to come before him and say, wash me clean of my sin, of my brokenness. I am incomplete, and I need you to forgive me and restore me. And it's at that place where we meet him and ask for forgiveness that true love can start to grow in us, that our relationship with God starts to come into focus. Otherwise, it's just songs. Otherwise, it's just niceness. So I wonder if you're here this morning, and very simply, maybe you would like to join me down front. Maybe you would like to come and bow down at the front and just ask God to forgive you and to clean you and to wash you. And if you would do that, if, if, if you would like to do that, I would invite you to do it right now, if that's you. We've left some time for prayer, so if that's you, I would invite you to come down and join me if that's you. And, and the scriptures say that when we have sinned, when we are broken, that Jesus, when we come to him, is faithful and just, and he will forgive us of our sins. And he will wash away our trespasses. And we can walk away into new life, brand new and clean. And I wonder if you are married this morning and maybe you are here with your spouse, would you come with your spouse? And come kneel down at the front and say, God, forgive us together as a couple. Wash away all of our brokenness. Humility with each other, humility of a husband toward a wife and a wife toward a husband starts with humility toward God. If we can't be humble toward God, we will never be able to be humble toward each other in marriage. So maybe you're a married couple. Would you come down this morning? Maybe your spouse is not with you. Would you come down? If you can't kneel, come stand. If your body is in such a way that it's hard for you to kneel, I was also looking at these, these chairs in the front, all empty down here. So if you wanna get up and come sit in a chair down front as a way to respond, I would encourage you. The worship team's just playing. So we're gonna make this a place of prayer and asking God to wash over and forgive us. And after we've done this for a few minutes, there's something else that I feel uh, God laying on my heart to 
to kind of facilitate here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let us just pray for a few minutes. Please forgive us. Forgive us for treating you so lightly. 
Forgive us for ignoring the brokenness in our relationships and our personal lives. Forgive us for making nice with sin. Forgive us for our laziness, for our complacency. Forgive us for our anger and unforgiveness. Forgive us for focusing on ourselves, constantly focusing on ourselves. Forgive us for missing you. Forgive us, God, for our, our laziness in getting close to you. Forgive us for our laziness in reaching out to you. Forgive us for putting so many other things first and not you. Forgive us, God, for our resistance and our hardness toward you. Forgive us, God, for our fear and timidity. Forgive us. God, we want to be in right relationship with you, and we are so thankful that all we have to do is ask. And at the moment, because, Jesus, of what you did on the cross, all we have to do is ask. And in that instant, we are made new and cleansed. Thank you for your forgiveness toward us. Thank you for offering us new life, for us to fully appreciate that. God, help us not to ignore the gravity and the hugeness of our sin and brokenness, the, the hugeness of our need for you every single day, the importance of us coming to you in brokenness and humility every day. God, you accept people who are humble, who realize their need for you. Accept us today as we humbly come to you and say we need you. If you're here this morning and you are married, um, can I ask you just to come down here and just stand along the front? If you're here with your spouse or not with your spouse, just get up and come down and stand along the front. Just kind of fan out and leave a little room behind you because I'm going to ask some people to come behind you and pray over you. Space out as best you can. And I'm going to put some of you guys that are sitting in the chairs uh, big time on the spot right now. Um, make sure you uh, leave some room because I'm going to ask people to come, come walk behind you. And so leave some room behind you so people can just touch your shoulder and pray over you. Um, marriages are a big deal. I really believe the scriptures teach that. And this morning, I, I felt like it was a good idea to invite the rest of us to pray over you and your marriages. So I'm going to ask you who are comfortable with it, if you know Jesus and you're sitting out there, if you would come in the next few minutes, and I'm going to pray, but if you would come and just walk down through here and just put, Margie, I know you know how to do this. I know you know how to do this. Walk down through here and just put your hands on as many shoulders as you can and just simply pray, God bless these couples. God help these couples. Help them to cling and help them to be a blessing to the world. Help them to stay strong despite huge pressure to break down this institution of marriage from the devil, from the culture. They need your prayer. So if you're comfortable with that and where there aren't enough hands moving around, maybe you married couples could reach over and put a hand on the shoulder of the person, the people next to you, and kind of pray for each other. So I'm going to pray a long prayer, but it's not meant to be a monologue. I'm hoping you guys will all pray yourselves and pray over each other. So once you've had a hand on your shoulder, maybe you married couples, you just feel the Spirit moving. Just do what you got to do. As the Spirit's moving you, maybe you married couples start just walking around praying for each other. Let's just let God do something here. Can we do that? Can we minister to each other this morning? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying to restore the purity and the goodness and the strength of marriages and relationships. Thank you for making us whole spiritually so that we can actually be a blessing to our spouse and not just selfish jerks, God. Without you, we wouldn't understand what love and what selflessness really are. Jesus, you show that to us by dying on the cross. So it's only in grasping your cross love, grasping your self-sacrificial love that we can even begin 
begin to understand how to be a blessing to our spouse, to be selfless like you, to sacrifice, to love in the way that we should. And so we pray together as married couples, as unmarried people, we pray over these marriages represented at the front of this room this morning. We pray blessing on these marriages. God, it takes strength. We know you want to use these marriages to bless the world, not just to be people staring at each other and having a nice life. You want to use these marriages to bless the world and to tend to your creation and do your work. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, by your power and strength, these humble couples who have come forward this morning acknowledging that you are their creator, that you are the one who empowers them, that you are their source of life. We pray for these couples that they would have your strength, Holy Spirit, to go be a blessing to the world, to reflect God, who you are, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God, Christ, and the church. We pray that these marriages would reflect a picture, the right picture, the picture you want the world to see, that these marriages would reflect that picture to the world around them. We pray, God, that you would help them to overcome temptation within their marriage, whatever these couples are struggling with. God, we pray they would overcome it, not just for their own enjoyment, so that they can be strong, they can remain one to do what you've called them to do in the world around them. We pray for the, for the children represented by these couples here. We pray you would bless these couples so that they can be a blessing to their children. God, keep these unions strong by your power. I pray that each individual person in these marriages here would be seeking you wholeheartedly and humbly and earnestly. And as they do that, they would find that they have the strength to cling even better, to be the person in this marriage that you've called them to be. I pray that each person in the marriages represented here would truly fulfill their role and responsibility, would fulfill the calling you placed on their life to their spouse and to the world around them. Give them the strength where they lack it. Help them, Lord, to be devoted not only to each other, but to the people that you've put under their care, in their sphere, and under their influence. God, protect these marriages. I pray they would be a blessing to every, everyone around them. And I do pray for the unmarried people that we have in the room here today. Give them the strength to be a blessing and to be a friend of married people. We do together all agree that you value and that you created this union of marriage. So help us all, whether we are married or unmarried, to value, to esteem, to honor, to respect, to support, and be a friend of marriage. Marriage as you have made it to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I, I, I think we're done. Um, I, think, I think we're done. Uh, Mike, uh, would you uh, come on up, Pastor Mike, and, and uh, wrap it up? If we, he'll, my, Pastor Mike will say if we're done or we're not done or, or what comes next here. I don't know if we're worshiping some more or if Mike's going to come up and uh, tell us what's happening next here. So. No, I think it appropriate at this time to worship God. God's doing something significant here in this place. It's not something fabricated, it's something real, and it's a moment that we should take advantage of here in just worshiping our God. We have this amazing picture of who God is and what an honor it is in our marriages to be able to reflect him in this world. Do we realize what an honor that is? to be able to reflect who God is and his goodness in this world through our marriages. For those of us who aren't married, a crucial role to play in helping, helping those who are married to do so. And it does, Pastor Donnie is absolutely right. It starts at this place of knowing who we are and knowing who God is, adoring him, loving him, seeking him as Lord and Savior. And so let's take a moment here this morning and let's just worship him. Can we do that? We can do that. Let's do that.
getting our attention here this morning. And we recognize that you are such a good and loving God who wants the best, wants the best for every individual here in this place who wants the best for our marriages, who wants the best for our children, who wants the best for our culture and in our world. God, I pray that you would help us. Help us to continually have this posture of humility before you, to know that we are not God, but that you are God, that your way forward is true and right and good. Help us to own up to the fact that we make terrible gods. And in that realization, would you continue to meet us, meet us in our lack when we run into difficulty, when we run into trouble, God, and when voices cry out to you, God, would you respond? Would you direct? Would you fill us with your spirit to be able to live according to the ways you want us to live. Help us to give an accurate reflection of who you are in this world, in our marriages. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would mend the marriages here in this place that have fractures, the marriages that are broken, the marriages that are beginning to dull, God, I pray that you would speak life into those marriages, that you would help them to thrive, God, and flourish. Would you restore them? Would you grow what it is that you have planted and started here this morning? Would you wake us up as a people to value this union of marriage in our culture in a way that is so honoring to you. I pray that the embodiment of who you are in our marriages would be displayed so powerfully in our culture that people would be drawn to you as a result, God. So help us. We recognize how bankrupt we are and how much help we need. So Holy Spirit, would you please breathe your power and life into our lives to be able to live in the way that you have called us to live. Jesus, we thank you for creating the way where we could live in relationship with you. We pause and we say thank you. We love you. We adore you. We worship you. We want to glorify you. Help us to be captured more and more by you and your love for us that we would change as a result, that our families would change, that our culture would change. Help us to do that, all to the glory of your name. And it's in that name, the name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and have a seat for just a moment, because i got a couple other things to say to you. Thank you, Pastor Donnie, for being obedient to the Spirit of God and his leading this morning. And uh, pray that that was a blessing to your life this morning. Uh, A little out of the norm to get up and to come forward, but I I find that to be appropriate, appropriate in responding to God and being humble before Him. And I I pray that that even just seemingly um, simple walk to the front of the room, and maybe how counterintuitive at times that that feels, I pray that that is a... um, a practice and a moment that you can cherish when considering how we should be stepping up and stepping forward in our world and showing people who God is, what he is like, and actually paying attention to our marriages in that regard and caring about that enough to accurately reflect God. I I don't want to preach another sermon. I really don't. As Christians, it would be unthinkable if from the stage I I started yelling out, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. You'd be like, whoa, that is like the complete opposite of what God tells us to do. He says, love one another because that's how they'll know that you're my disciples because that's who God is. He is love. And as crazy as it would be for a preacher to be like, I hate all of you. It's 
that crazy to not accurately reflect God in our marriages because it's that marriage and that union between a man and a woman that is designed to show the world who God is and what he is like. And so let us take that seriously, not only as a duty, but honestly as an honor. What a glorious honor it is to reflect this perfect and loving and just and good and caring and hope-filled and peaceful. God out into this world through our marriages. And so as I've prayed here this morning, and as we've prayed quite a bit this morning, let us continue to seek the Spirit of God, which is the empowering agent to be able to do just that. Amen. Amen. I would encourage you this week to stay rooted in God's Word. I want to invite you to read the Bible reading plan in the YouVersion Bible reading app. There's actually two, fully connected marriage, and then this one's a little bit of a, of a mouthful, sufficiently secure, supernaturally saved, single, satisfied, and set apart. I love it. Isn't that good? That's a good Bible reading plan to read here this week. Uh, thank you in advance for just doing what it is God wants you to do, not only in these arenas, but uh, as you faithfully do. Uh, as a church, you know, I see a church here, which is a group of people, that's what a church is, of believers coming together, wanting to sincerely follow Jesus. And when we do that, wow, significant things happen. And thank you for being a part of this community where that's happening every single day, doing what it is God wants us to do. Just this past weekend, we had over 30 children, 36 children in this space and 13 adults uh, helping for a an anti-bullying kind of, uh, for lack of better term, retreat. And so take a look at a couple of these pictures. You know, our, our schools right now are pretty uh, hostile environments for, for children, and bullying is really affecting our children. And so um, our pastors, our children's pastors, have uh, felt it on their spirit to, to have a moment to pour into our children and teaching about bullying and anti-bullying all in the name of of god and the love that he has for people children and the intrinsic value that is on every life and so that happened this past weekend on friday and saturday and it was awesome and amazing and i just needed to share that good news with you and in fact they were shooting one another with nerf guns here in an anti-bullying um Retreat, which is kind of, I thought that was funny. All right, don't bully one another. Now go in there and shoot one another with Nerf guns. Uh, <laughs> so much fun. So thank you. When you, when uh, we're creating that kind of space here at Riverside, where children and students and young adults and adults are finding and following Jesus. So thank you for being a part of it and being faithful in your giving. Um, in order to make it happen. And so can I pray for you as we prepare to leave from this place and to take away what it is we experienced here, what it is God wants to do in our lives. Let me pray for us as we prepare to leave. God, thank you. Thank you for your presence here in this place and your goodness. We see this glorious picture of what you have in store for, for married lives and pray that you would help us to accurately reflect it to be it, to embody it. And God, for those who aren't married here in this place, I pray by the power of your spirit, as you have uniquely positioned them in your kingdom to help support and lift up this institution of marriage, help them to be safe places for married couples and good friends, support systems, God, wisdom and experience to help, help us all to follow God in the lanes that you have set before us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. If you are here and are new or newer to Riverside and just want to know a little bit more about uh, our church, I want to invite you for just a quick 10-minute session-ish across the hall, our new-to-know session. God bless you. Hope to see you next week. Goodbye. Love you all.